Apple just released iOS 16.4 beta 3 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. And along with this update, we also got beta 3 for iPad OS 16.4, Mac OS 13.3, Watch OS 9.4, tvOS 16.4, and HomePod OS 16.4. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS 16.4 beta 3. And let's start off with the size of this update. And you can see it comes in at 660 megabytes on the dot on my iPhone 14 Pro Max, a relatively large size for a third beta. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new update in our settings general about. We can see that 20E5229E is the new build number. So we still have an E at the end of the build number, which does indicate we still have a few more betas to go. Now, if we go down and check out the modem firmware that has also been updated, it's now 1.67.03 on my device. That number will be different depending on your phone and carrier. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16.4 beta three? And the first thing is something I've been asking about ever since 16.4 beta one released, and that is inside of settings general software update and then beta updates. And this of course is one of the biggest changes in iOS 16.4 since it's pretty much going to phase out beta profiles for non paying Apple developer customers. And I already talked about that. If you want to know about that, watch my beta one video for 16.4. But anyways, the new thing here is down here, we have an Apple ID section. And what this does is it allows you to add a secondary Apple ID that you may use for your developer account like I do. So basically now, you know, the problem before was that my Apple ID on my device and the account I use as a developer were different. I had two different Apple IDs. So in the future, if I needed the Apple ID on my device to match the developer account, I would have to shift everything over to that new Apple ID. But now that problem has been solved because now we can add our developer account Apple ID in here and still get future developer beta updates without having to change the overall Apple ID on our device. And once you tap on that Apple ID button, this is what pops up right here. So it shows you're currently signed in Apple ID that's on your device, but you could also use a different Apple ID. And it says you can sign in with a different Apple ID that is enrolled in the Apple beta software program or Apple developer program. So this applies to not only the developer program, but also the public beta program as well. So this is nice to see. And then this is the prompt that you get after inputting a different Apple ID. And then after that, it will show that new Apple ID right here in this section. In the books application, we have a new little pop up down here that shows we can change the animation when you turn the page. So it says choose a theme, page turn animation and more to make each book perfect for you. So that is a new little pop up there. And of course, in the previous beta, we saw that new page turn animation return and that animation looks like like this it is the classic page turn animation and if you wanted to change that you can change it in the books application but you could also change it in your books settings so we have a new toggle here under books if we go down here you will see that we have a new section for page turn animation and from here you can choose slide curl or none and in the books application you just change it under themes and settings and then you have a new section there for changing the animation when you change pages and by the way i did also notice that the text example where it says original under the different fonts right here show up smaller now so we have a smaller font size where it says original quiet paper focus all of those are smaller as you can see 16.3 3.1 on the left, 16.4 beta 3 on the right, just a minor change I noticed. Something else I noticed is that the star glyph, which indicates that a song is popular on an album, is a little bit smaller here in 16.4 compared to 16.3.1 on the left. You can see it's pretty large over there and it's much smaller on this new version. And the waveform next to that star is also different when the music is paused. So you can see before it was red, now it's gray. It was also much thicker and more prominent before, but now it's a little bit more subtle on 16.4. Beta 2 introduced some weird UI bugs for the notification center where some of these notifications were more boxed off and kind of overlapping. So that appears to be fixed here in beta 3, although it only happened to me one time. So it's hard to say. So I would recommend you go in to your notification center and see if that UI bug has been patched for you. But for me, everything seems to be the same now seems to be back to normal things are overlapping in a weird way this one still kind of is but it's not a bug and we don't have those weird squared off edges they are back to being round 
as intended. Something else I noticed pretty quickly is that we do have a bug with the battery widget. So now when you add a battery widget, it doesn't show exactly what that battery percentage is showing for. There's no glyph icon in the middle to indicate what that battery is for. If it's an Apple Watch, if it's your AirPods or what. And it seems to only be affecting the small widget because you could see on the bigger widget, it does show what that battery percentage is for. And it only appears to be on the lock screen as well because I wanna go into the home screen and go to the battery widget, it shows just fine. So that does appear to be an issue just specifically for the lock screen. I did also want to mention that tvOS 16.3.3 was released for the third generation Apple TV to fix the issue with the Siri remote where it could become unresponsive, which I did face a lot. So thankfully that has been fixed. I'm not sure if it's in the latest tvOS 16.4 beta 3 software, but if not, you know, just go ahead and update to the latest public release and you will get that fix. The release notes appear to be the same as beta 2. If you go down, you can see we have the same known issues, the new feature for beta enrollment, and pretty much everything appears to be the same as it was in beta 2. I'm not really seeing anything of significance here that is worth mentioning for beta 3 specifically. However, if you do want to look through the documentation, I will leave a link to this down in the description below so you can see all of the known issues and all of the new features and fixes that Apple has implemented here and at 16.4 in general, not just beta 3 specifically. Now, as far as the performance and battery life goes, I am going to run a quick CPU benchmark here to see how it compares to beta 2. But so far, everything feels about the same, I would say, as beta 2, which beta 2 performance was great. I would say that beta 3 might even be a little bit better just because I don't have that issue on the lock screen with those notification bubbles having squared off edges. So we scored a 2518 on the single core and a 6357 on the multi core. And what's interesting here is that these numbers are not only lower than beta two, but also lower than beta one. So quite interesting. Again, don't put too much stock into these benchmark tests, but it is kind of interesting to track and see what we score on a beta by beta basis. And as far as battery life goes I've personally not had an issue with battery life on 16.4 ever since the first beta I thought it was about the same as 16.3.1 it may be slightly lower but that's kind of the trade-off with getting a lot of these new features and changes in 16.4 because there are a quite a few new features and changes so you're not expecting the same battery life on at these beta stages however I don't think battery life is terrible here on beta 3 some users were reporting bad battery life in beta 2 but those same users are the ones that had issues on 16.3 and 0.3.1 as well so 16.4 at least in the beta stages is not going to magically fix your battery drain however it is still too early to say whether battery life is better or worse here on beta 3 so i will give you guys an update in my apple weekly episode coming on saturday and then finally let's talk about what to expect next from apple so just as i predicted we are back on a one week release schedule for these 16.4 beta updates so i would expect beta 4 ios 16.4 beta 4 to come next week on the week of march 13th now apple does usually stick to that tuesday release so i would expect that to continue of course it could always come a day or two after tuesday but apple usually stays true to those tuesday releases so we should see that next week and then as far as the final release for 16.4 According to the E at the end of this build number, and also according to Mark German, we can expect to see iOS 16.4 in April. And if I had to make an educated guess on the exact day we could see 16.4, I would guess it would be right there on April 3rd, the first Monday of April. So that is iOS 16.4 beta 3, not near as many new features or changes as we saw in betas one and two, which were just absolutely loaded with new changes. So I'm not surprised there. We're probably going to see a big decline with the next beta as well. That's usually how betas go. A lot of the big features are introduced in the first two betas. And then from there on out, it's usually just testing out those new features that's the point of the betas but nonetheless i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next ios 16.4 beta video and of course the final release when that does eventually drop but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon